Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Keith, this is Leon. We're here today to finally build that creator's PC that we talked about back in episode one of Down to the Marrow. Next question comes from Third World Cognito. He asks, are going to have PC builds? Yes. This is one of the most, if not the most requested video I've ever had. It's in the comments all the time. Literally yeah. every single video is, when are you guys gonna do a PC build? So. We're doing it. Since then, I've been compiling a list of requirements because what we're going to be doing today is building a sort of all-purpose media computer for the studio here, one that both myself and Leon can use. So it's sort of going to be like a B-rig here because we do a lot of audio, a lot of video editing, and we're expanding a little bit, so. This is basically like your all-round ripper PC for editing and gaming and everything that's not directly studio related. It's worth noting that this isn't necessarily a budget build guide. If your life revolves both professionally and entertainment wise around a home computer, this is basically the computer you would build if you took it real seriously. So you're probably asking why these two guitar player death metal guys are about to uh, put together a few thousand dollars worth of high-end hardware. It doesn't seem like we're very qualified for that, right? Yeah. An interesting thing is that when we first met, neither of us had any idea that we were both into PC building. Independently, of each other, we had both built like super high-end rigs for ourselves. Eventually, at some point, I think you came over to the house and you saw that I had a, a machine that was laying around. Mm -hmm. We started talking about video cards, and I was like, huh, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. That's weird. <laughs> if you're not from that industry, right. it's rare. Outside of what I do for work, it would be rare for me to find anybody who's actually built themselves a PC. Keith had built his and I had built mine and they were basically the same machine. They were if almost I remember, identical. They were almost yeah. identical too, yeah. Identical specs basically. You know, since then we've also been one up in each other. Those computers are built for professional use but also very enthusiast grade. This is the kind of machine that you could work hard on all day, and then at the end of the evening, you could still chill and plug Play it into your TV and, yeah. and game in 4K if you wanted. So at the heart of this beast is an Intel processor. Why Intel over AMD? So the CPU choice we've gone with for this build is the Intel Core i9-10850K. Uh, this is a 10th gen unlocked Intel chip. And the reason we've gone with Intel over AMD is uh, basically because of one thing, and that's the Thunderbolt support, specifically the Universal Audio uh, Apollo devices, which uh, we have here. It's going to be our audio device. Bus-powered Thunderbolt 3 interface, audio recording interface, digital signal processor so you can run plugins. It's a really cool little audio unit. Record guitar, microphones, vocals, whatever you want. This particular machine here is specced out and built in such a way where we're not really taking any chances on stability or any of the components not being compatible, but we're also future-proofing it a little bit so we can upgrade it if we need to. And you chose this Gigabyte motherboard for any specific reason? So for the motherboard, I have the Z490 Vision D. Uh, this is the newer Designair board. Well, you know, the one issue with trying to build a computer like this is your options for Thunderbolt native motherboards limited. are really limited. This, however, is specifically designed for Thunderbolt. Exactly. Uh, this is like the main feature of this board, so it's kind of a no-brainer for this particular build. There are other Thunderbolt boards that are available, but because Leon has the previous generation of this, and I'm stoked on it, I figured I would go with that, so we're gonna give that a shot. By having Thunderbolt built straight into the board, you're not, you don't lose a PCI lane, and you're not adding a single point of failure. So tell me why you went with uh, a 2080 Ti instead of a 3080 or 3090. Okay, so at the time of this video, it is the week of, basically, or month of, the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series release. We tried to get our hands on one for this build. Both of us. Both of us tried. We even both have some friends that work at NVIDIA that tried for us. Yeah. If anyone's been following the uh, RTX, drama. then they probably have seen that it was a complete train wreck and there was no chance that we were going to get one. So what I'm doing here is I, I already owned this card. Yeah. This is the card that I've actually been editing all my video on for the past few months. Sure. It's still current. It's still relevant. So this is a pretty cool version of the 2080 because it's actually just a full liquid cooled system. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's got a basically an AIO on it. It stays perfectly cool, but it's also silent. 
Yeah. Uh, that's the the really nice thing about it that's is if cool. it sits under the studio desk, we want it to be quiet, uh, as quiet as we can get it. And because of that, our CPU cooler is also a liquid cooled design. And we're going with the uh, 360 millimeter castle. The reason I chose this one is just because I have the 240 millimeter version. It's also an i9 machine and it runs pretty hot even with uh, the 240 millimeter version of this. So I decided it's probably going to put out a little bit more heat even than the, the 9th gen. So I went ahead and got a pretty robust cooler for it. We got some extra fans. We got some RGB because of course we got to do RGB. We got to please the kids <laughs> with this thing, yeah. right? Come on. Power supply is not something that people generally give a lot of thought to, although I think it's one of the most crucial components to not cheap out on on your machine. I actually built a machine, very low budget, and the power supply actually caught on fire after not having used it in three years. We plugged it in and it blew up. For this machine, I decided to go a little higher quality and go with the, uh, the titanium version. So for this build, I wanted storage options. Yeah. For one, you need speed. Of course. You definitely have to have NVMe drives. Yeah. And you want to populate every spot if you can. If you can, yeah. One drive for the operating system. Mm -hmm. I have one drive for all of my audio. I have one drive for all of my video. And then these two drives, I basically have paired in Windows pooling mode. Okay. So I can stack them together. And that's my Dropbox and Google Drive. Sure. That's backup of all my cloud information. Right. That's my current storage methodology. But the way that you do it is you basically rate them and then you have just one big C drive. Yeah. Uh, then I got a couple fan splitters just in case we want to mess around. Keep the wiring clean. Uh, this is for the video card. What kind of RAM you got there? Oh yeah, so we haven't even talked about the RAM yet. So we have an overkill kit of 64 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz Vengeance Pro RAM. Nice. And why 64 gigs is basically just because sometimes when you're loading those huge plug-in libraries, they yeah. take up a lot of RAM. So I mean, the main reason you would have that much RAM is so you can run an audio session a 60 gigabyte video session and a game downloading <laughs> in the background all at the, all same, the same time. time. <laughs> and right now RAM is cheaper than it has been in the last five years or so, so it's not a bad time to stock up on RAM. Uh, so this bracket here I have for, uh, we're gonna vertical mount the GPU. Nice. So this is uh, the fractal design riser that's made for this case. So what's the deal with this case? I've built a couple computers in the fractal design Define R6 case. It's really quiet for one, that's mm -hmm. that's the main thing, but the cable management on it is impeccable. It's really nice looking, really good airflow. You're from the desert, you probably got a knife on you, right? So this is gonna be a kind of a unique build for me as well because Leon and I have never built a computer together, but he's gonna be building this primarily by himself and I'm gonna be filming it and talking about it as we go along. So basically if it melts, we can blame this guy. Okay. What order would you typically go in? So I usually build out all the motherboard stuff first, put all the case stuff together second, and then marry the two, and then pick up whatever bits and pieces I have left afterwards. Right. If you want to consider it a build guide at all, I would maybe consider this to be somewhat of a uh, intermediate build guide. Because if we're going to be talking about these components, uh, it's, it's hard to know everything that goes into a computer unless you've built one. It could still be very daunting to someone who wants to build a computer to realize, okay, you need all these separate components. Like, how do you remember everything right, you need? everything you know? you're gonna need. Yeah. There's resources for that, but basically, it's adult Legos. Yeah. It's all right. modular. You don't need to have any advanced skill set. There's to... very few things that you have to know before you start. So basically, once you've secured all the parts to this, you can put it together fairly easily. Yeah. And then you smash it to fucking pieces and throw it away and start over. So did you bring an ESD bracelet? Nah. So you're gonna discharge your ES in my south bridge right now? Basically. Okay. All right, All right, so let's crack this beast open. Getting a look at the Gigabyte Z490 Vision D. So is this motherboard, they named it Vision D because they know you're gonna create like a ton of dick pics. So mm. it's like Vision D. Comes in its own ESD bag. I wish it came with LSD, PCP. Probably came with COVID-19 now. There you go. <laughs> All right, so that's the board. Beauty. Looks pretty good. Hey, no. Oh. Pardon me. Oh, oh. 
how it's made, Death Metal Edition. Yeah, I'd be glad to explain it if I actually knew what I was doing. How come this one didn't come in one of those big, crazy basketball things? It didn't come in the Death Star like the ninth gen did. Yeah, it came in this boring ass box. Oh, AMD Ryzen looks all cool. And then you look at this Intel chip and you're like, meh, meh, meh. And that's how you put in an Intel 10850K. Uh, Alright, so what else are we doing? We can put in El Ramo. This Ram's pissed though, dude. It's got vengeance written all over it. How many computers would you say you've built? Mm, I would say probably about a thousand. I did work at a company once that uh, we built every single machine we used in the data center by hand. So what do you currently do for work? Now I do project management. I used to manage data centers where I would build these kind of machines all the time. So for our drives, I chose these Sobrent Rocket one terabyte drives. The only reason I chose these is basically because I have them in my other machine. I took a chance on them the first time and they've been great. I haven't had any issues with them at all. Did you get all these parts on Amazon? I did. Everything. I ordered everything on Amazon. Amazon just has a pretty decent Return policy. So I, kinda, just, I mean, Amazon is a huge, shitty corporation, but they do make it easy. Here's what I'm looking at. In 2020, during a COVID situation, a defunct, out of work musician trying to build a computer, <laughs> where are you going to get this stuff? Where are you even going to find any of this? You have to order it online. So when you're installing these M.2 drives, sometimes they come with these heat sinks right here. And what you want to remember is to take this plastic off the back of it when you install it. If you don't take this off, it won't transfer heat properly. All right, well, that's motherboard. That's motherboard. All right, so now that we have the motherboard built, we can start working on the case, yeah? Yeah. All right, so now that Leon has prepped our motherboard to go inside the case, we can prep our case for this motherboard. So let's bring this case over here. Oh, God! So this is always the part that's kind of interesting to me because every builder does this a little bit differently. Yeah. Like everyone has their own style when sure. it comes to the way they assemble it inside the case. I think if you dropped this thing on your dick, it would smash it off. I love how you just threw the bag down on the motherboard, like it just doesn't matter at all. Oh, shit, I did. Prepare for your most unlikes ever. I mean, if you're not RGB living in 2020, what are you even doing? You know, grumpy ass old man. Like, you gotta me. live that RGB life. You gotta embrace it. Yeah, the cable management is something you gotta think about the entire build because you don't want your cables all over the place. So organize this so that the cables are as close as possible to the motherboard, so I can tuck away the excess, but I also have the length to reach. Another thing I've learned after doing a lot of these is to do the screws in an X pattern and don't tighten them all the way until you're absolutely done. A 360 all-in-one cooler may be compatible with this case, but it might not be compatible with the RAM you chose, which is the case here. This RAM's pretty huge. It's a pretty tall kit. Uh, our 360 Rad fit in there nicely, and the fans will mount on it, but the problem is, is there's not enough clearance between the RAM and the fan. And I think what we're gonna do right now is go down to Fry's Electronics. <gasps> Leon's Superstore. See if we can pick up maybe a 240. That should fit in there nicely. I know for a fact because I have that in this rig. Bling. Same RAM too. You're not unstoked right now, are you? I gotta admit, I love going to fries. Got your mask? I do. Fries. <laughs> it is saved. <laughs> Fries electronics saved. 
You're a dork. So we have some acoustic panels in the back of Leon's fine vehicle here that we're gonna be upgrading his studio with. And he decided to leave him in his car and I forgot to tell him that these Owens Corning 703 panels actually smell like sushi. Mm. And now his nice Volvo smells like fish. Thanks for the heads up on that one. Somewhere in Oregon again. So when did you start building computers? Probably like the mid to late 90s, I think. Uh, I was working at a data center. It means I got to be friendly with the, the company that was building our machines. They were called Mountain Computing. I asked the guy if he would build me a machine. I told him my budget was, and he was like, you're not gonna get much machine for this. And so he kind of just hit me to the idea of building my own. So you started building computers for work, but you also got into it as an enthusiast and you did it for gaming and also for fun. Yeah. And eventually because you needed a good DAW machine. Yeah. After I built that first one, I decided I was never gonna buy another machine because it was cheaper. I could build it exactly to my spec. Later on, I did inherit a little money and decided to treat myself to a build machine uh, by a company whose initials are MG, who suck so hard, I cannot tell you how much I had to go through to get my money back on this piece of shit machine they built for me. Back to following my own rule of not ever buying a machine again. What self-respecting human being wouldn't want to go to Fry's Electronics? Anybody who's not a dork. There's a definite <laughs> possibility that they don't <laughs> exist anymore. Electronics. What I think it's of? supposed to have a theme, but this one's got like a real whack ass theme. The theme at this one is failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went to one in LA that had like an Alice in Wonderland theme. The one in San Jose has got like a crash spaceship, and the one in uh, somewhere near San Francisco is like a pyramid. And, and this one? Desperation. <laughs> Emptiness. Corporate America. This is not the fries that I used to get excited to come to. No. Chip, Chip, my man, you've fallen so far. Chip, selling the knockoff perfumes, bro. This used to be 100% full of stuff. And now it's kind of like the boneyard that no one ever wants to pick through. At least they still have a few cases left. They're all kind of trash though. We got some slim pickings here, boy. Ooh, man. Ooh, this is rough, dude. We have a problem for sure. That's their graphics card selection right now. They got a Radeon 550 XT and a GT 710. Times change, man. Bro, chip. Well, that sucked. That was a hard burn. That was really sad. The route is being calculated. Now turn left. I learned it from Wes Howard, but it's, it's not typically on the menu, but you can order a quesadilla. You have to specifically ask for it though. Like, I was going to run and get some food at Chipotle, and he's like, give me a quesadilla. I was like, I don't think they have it. And he enlightened me. Uh, he unlocked the full potential the of Chipotle. Yeah. Well, now that we smell burritos and failure, and we're headed back from Fry's on this back road that leads through the forest. It's always so dark. You guys probably can't really see it, but. Keith and Crystals. Fry's was a complete disappointment. That was sad. Now we're back, completely defeated by Fry's Electronics. There's a pretty good chance we could fit this 360 radiator in the front of the case and then put the uh, graphics card radiator in the top. I think that might work. We're going to have to try it out and see. This is turning out to be the PC of sadness so far. <laughs> I mean, they always are. This is real typical shit. Why? Chip, dude. Oh, Chip, you've done us wrong. You've done us dirty. I think they have a chip on their shoulder about Amazon. What? 
I had no idea that that's what the name of the mascot is. I actually don't know if that's his name. <laughs> I just official. really wanted it to be his name. <laughs> but I feel like it is. I, mean, I feel it's, like maybe I mean, it's right. gotta be, yeah. Like, that, that's gotta be it, right? He like, would, if, if he had a name, it would have to be Chip. chip. You know why? Why? Because he's a computer chip. What? So far, our first attempt at doing a PC build guide is <laughs> going pretty well, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, swimmingly. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Wait a minute. We can fix this. We can fix this. I'm so glad this is your machine and not mine. Oh, well, really, there's only one place you can put it. And that place is directly up here. All right, so that went in there pretty nicely, actually. Yeah. In order to use the 360 radiator, you actually have to forego your drive bay, which is not a big deal. I mean, who in the hell is going to use that? Right. So you have to take out a cage to make room for the 360 radiator, which we have now figured out after going and getting burritos. Now I'm going to use my burrito finger and put this motherfucker <laughs> put this motherfucker in. It should center on the center post right there. And that'll line it up so that your rear I.O. sits right where it needs to sit. I think there's a lot of superstitions around right? building computers. Like, like I want to know how many times using a magnetic screwdriver has actually damaged a motherboard. And then the ESD bracelet. Okay, it's not a myth. You it's actually myth. can mess up a computer. Or not grounding yourself properly, right. I guess. Out of the 40 to 50 computers I've built in my life, I have never once... <laughs> <laughs> I have never once had an issue with uh, static Meaning. ruining a component. Yeah. This is good. Look at that. There we go. Nice. Put these in, and then oh, that, that locks, locks with, over the yeah, top. Yeah, right. So there's not much to talk about on putting this together. Basically, just follow the instruction manual which Leon didn't do, because he's a nerd gangster and could just do it without. <laughs> he's not nerdy enough to wipe off all that thermal paste and put on like some high-end <laughs> stuff. Yeah, we used to build machines with no paste at all, just metal-to-metal -metal contact. Rebels. Yeah, it is a good looking case. When it's all together, it's just real minimal, but like yeah. high quality minimal, you yeah. know? Like it, it doesn't feel like a rickety fucking piece of shit. Like right. sometimes you take the sides off these things, and you can just like wiggle it from side to side, right. you know? Yeah. That's embarrassing, and if you make a case like that, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed, Antec. Again, for me, X pattern, don't go all the way until you're 18. And they don't need to be as tight as you think they do. Yeah. You know, like you that's don't want the metal You don't want to crank them down. Yeah. They just need to be snug. They just need to do the job. But yeah, always go in like an X pattern. Thermal paste will spread evenly across the top of the CPU. It's like, this thing's about to do some work right now. <laughs> this graphics card isn't a standard installation. Normally you would just plug it into this PCI Express slot, the top one here, and you'd be ready to party. We have a liquid cooler on this 2080 Ti, and so we have to install the radiator on the top of the case. A little bit more of a process than it would normally be. Not a big deal. So let's put the drives in before we put this card in. So there was no SATA cables in the motherboard box? I don't think so, unless like I just completely overlooked Austin. Maybe there's one of those secret compartment boxes, you know? Ah, there, there we, we go. go. There's the goodies. So the case candy, bro. Hey, look, dude, it came with a CD-ROM. <laughs> What's the quality of those SATA cables? I judge a motherboard based on the quality of the cables they send you. Strictly just that <laughs> only. Uh, I feel like you're gonna be disappointed then. You know, sometimes they give you like the cool braided ones. Yeah. You know, they have like a nice sleeve on them. <laughs> why are they not that? Why Why doesn't everybody have those? The braided sleeves. Those yeah. are the best ones. Those are the absolutely the, the other ones. People roll their eyes at this thing now anyway because it's a weak out date. There's something really satisfying about having two radiators in your rig though. That is. Like, that kind of makes up for not getting the 3090. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make up for it at all. I, I feel like I'm putting like a band-aid on this awesome build right now. That's the reality of it. So people are right. Yeah. Like I would be rolling my eyes. Putting this irrelevant 2080 Ti in there, like <laughs> on the way home from Fry's, my friend from NVIDIA actually texted me. They got 16 of them in stock at the employee store and they sold out in 30 seconds. At the employee Shit. store. Like people were just spamming refresh, just waiting to get those things. <laughs> Does this make you want to upgrade? 
I'll be I graduated, dude, here. and you stayed behind. Like, <laughs> I mean, are you just gonna like get a GED and like move on? Or? No. I think you should wait. I didn't. Everyone told me to wait too. Right. You know, but the thing is, is this is the most requested video for like the past three months. I didn't want to wait any longer. Yeah. So you decided to mount these SSDs nice and cleanly behind the motherboard. Yeah. Which I am fully on board with. It's going to be a fairly clean looking build, so it'll be nice just to have them out of the way where you don't have to stare at them anyway. Right. All right. Should we put that uh, GPU mount in there? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Do these in the servers too. Oh, okay. I have a couple of these, but this one's specific for this case. Gotcha. With this particular card, I think it makes sense because it doesn't have a fan on it. Well, I think we're doing a, a decent job of capturing the realities of building a high-end computer. It's never fun, but it's always fun. Maybe you can explain what it is you're doing right now because so, this is usually the part that everybody gets hung up on. Yeah. All right, so what do you got going on right now? This board came with this piece that you can plug all of these little pieces. These are all for the front panel. So sometimes a case will come with this already in a chunk like that. Uh, sometimes it comes like this where it's all spaced out. And I know where they go just like this, but this makes it much easier. It takes all the guesswork out of it. And a common misconception that is if you accidentally plug in your power and reset buttons backwards or something that it's going to somehow explode your computer upon startup but <laughs> yeah. that's not the case is the it the truth is that your machine just won't work it just won't turn on if you ever jacked off in one just to see what'll happen <laughs> just to burn some jizz on the motherboard <laughs> why did i say that this is like on brand yeah. i mean i know why i said it but i don't know why i said it in this video Something I'm very passionate about when it comes to building computers is the cable management. Because if there's any time to really spread the wings on your OCD, <laughs> it's when you're doing cable management on the back of a computer case. Because I don't want it to look like this. <laughs> yeah, I will take a machine apart if the cable management that you can't see is bad. So some people's idea of cable management is, can I get the side on there? How hard do I have to push on the side to get the screw in there? That's some people's idea of cable management. I know you feel me on that, dude. Yeah. I've seen your computer builds. I've seen where you work, too. It's crazy in there. And sometimes on these boards, at least on mine, there was an RGB header at the top and the bottom of the board. Mm -hmm. So we took a little break to clean up uh, the table here. We pulled out our power supply parts. These are all the cables that come with the power supply. So this is where we currently sit with it. Leanne's got our two Samsung SSDs mounted in the back behind the motherboard. He's done a little bit of cable management here on the side. Did the front mounted 360 millimeter radiator. Looks really nice. Start over in the corner here and just kind of mm -hmm. put one Go of these from there. Things. The cool thing is, is you can unplug those and there's little holes here. You could always oh, yeah. you could always go up under here. There's a lot of little cool spots on this case where you could do some real OCD cable management. Nope. Yeah, my philosophy on the RGB strips is basically as long as you can't see the individual lights, you, you're all right. Yeah. I mean, it's always like the insignificant things about computer builds that end up becoming the most difficult. All right, I think we're at the very end here, right? Like, really? If I yeah, we just have to mount this in? GPU finally that we've haphazardly flopped around inside <laughs> this case for like the past hour. Should have just bought a Mac. <laughs> it just works. Boomer shit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not an annoying friend that just holds a flashlight and makes <laughs> jokes on my own channel. I'm the chump. Oh Don't God. go chasing. <laughs> you know, me and Liz listened to that song the other day, and I was like, I don't know if I like this message. And so I looked up the lyrics because I, I assumed that it meant like you know, stay in your lane or something like that. But the first verse is about heroin addiction, and the second verse is about I forgot what the second verse is about, but it's also something fucked Planer up. Planar decoupling. <laughs> yeah, coaxial flutter. Disco mania in here. The most boring fucking shit on YouTube right now. <laughs> and they they wanted this video. Yeah, and they wanted it. You f then they're gonna cry about how we did it all wrong. Go deeper into the, the depths of this case. We may actually be ready to try to fire this thing up. Do you think it'll post? No, I don't. I'm not a superstitious man, but we have had some weird occurrences here in this studio lately. I don't know if we have poltergeist, but I don't think we're going to put any of the side panels on until after we know it posts. <laughs> you think people have faith in you right now, Leon, that you've 
correctly done this. But if it does post, I want you to hit like on this video. I, I guess. Oh, I thought you already tried to turn it on. No. Okay. Because I was like getting scared there for a second because it wasn't posting and I was like, yeah. dude, you, no, you failed. Shit. Scariest 20 seconds of your life right here. Take that monitor on? Probably not. <laughs> Wait. 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 <laughs> Come back. There we go. Oh! Ha! <laughs> it was just the monitor input. Boom! Hey, you guys like this killer dragon bell thing I got when I was in Taipei? Apparently, It'll bestow upon you ancient wisdom when you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Nothing happened. This thing sucks.